you, you with your questions, you with your gifts, you with your stories. Welcome to this community where we believe that faith matters. Welcome to this place where we believe that God is still speaking to us in this day and age. Oh, I don't know about you, but I know for me it's been quite a week, so I'm glad to be here. Today we're having our second storytelling worship service to link our particular story to the larger faith narrative. Why do we tell stories? We tell stories is because that is how we translate our truth to one another. We want to image God who chose to tell stories as a way for him to show and him or her them to show their great love for us. And we tell stories because there is no better way to convey our deep pain and deep love and deep urging that through story. Lord, breathe into us your spirit in this beautiful late summer morning. Attune us to each other, to each other's stories. Help us to share our own stories as we listen. And renew us in your word and spirit. In Jesus' name.
because today we're celebrating the sacred stories of our lives. We affirm that every person's story is holy. No one is excluded from that. But also every person's story is a part of God's story. So let us sing our hymn. We are um, dancing Sarah's circle to the tune of Jacob's <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
the title of my story is When I Didn't Get What I Feel I Deserved. <laughs> there was a time when I was on self-imposed isolation. I was 230 pounds, I was in lots of physical pain, and I was in terrible mental pain. I went to work, I picked up my daughter after school, and we spent the evenings alone in our house. I actually thought this was a good life. I had no friends, but I thought being a lone wolf was good too. I didn't trust people. It's good not to need anybody, I thought. There was one neighbor I had, though, that didn't seem to want me to be alone. Her name is not important at this point in the story. I would often run into her. She would not let me pass her by. She would ask how I was. She would ask with piercing blue eyes and a warm smile. She would invite me to pilgrim events, to events her children were performing in, to a simple walk with our dogs. I actually began to feel nagged by her. <laughs> I told her over and over again an excuse for not being able to go with her. I told her over and over again, no. The isolation continued. I was in a dark hole and I knew it, but I honestly didn't know how to climb out. I would write in my journal about this pain. I would pray to what I thought was an existent but distant God. Eventually, a dramatic life event occurred and I was forced to yell, uncle. My daughter, as many of you know, left my side, for this kind of life we had been living was suffocating her, and I was left alone. I couldn't seem to breathe in this new life without my daughter. She went halfway around the world with her husband, an unborn baby, and I never experienced such excruciating pain. There were changes that had to be made if I was going to survive. I cried out to my creator, whom I had not had much time for in the past decade, and the creator answered me. The first thing my creator sent was a therapist. Nothing like a creator plus therapist equals you get it. <laughs> I was beginning, just beginning to possibly see a light, but I was still very much alone. Although my neighbor had every right to grow tired of being rebuffed by me, she entered the picture again. Are you okay? Do you need a friend? Would you like to go for a walk? Nope. No thanks. Why doesn't this woman turn her back on me? This is what I deserve. Why does she still, after years of saying no, want to spend time with me? How are you today? You seem a bit sad. Would you like to go for a walk? <laughs> okay. And what a walk and talk we had. What a great listener who listens with such love. What a great questioner who makes me think and rethink. What a great advisor who offers different ways to consider things. Today, this woman and I are dear friends. She has been one of the most instrumental people in my life to lead me out of a stunted existence and into an ever-progressing growth. She has walked with me through various and numerous hard times in my life. She witnesses my fears, and then she talks to me the way I imagine the Creator would talk to me if she were standing right in front of me. She offers me different ways of looking at the world. She has helped me with my relationship with my daughter, and she has helped me with my quests for romantic love. <laughs> I am currently in a romantic relationship, which I could have screwed up several times. <laughs> if not for Brenda Barnes Jameson, who keeps me looking at all sides of the situation, who keeps me tuned into being compassionate with this person and with myself, 
who keeps me believing that the Creator is crazy in love with me. Brenda should have let me go after 100 times or more of putting her off. That is what I feel I deserved. But when I needed her, she was there. She continues to guide and love me in a way I have never experienced before. She is a manifestation, I believe, of the Creator's love. I don't deserve Brenda's love, but I am grateful that I have it. So our topic was to tell a story about when we didn't get what we deserved. And I, I found this to be a very challenging assignment to me. Um, I don't often think in the, in the frame of what I deserve. And I and I, I really sort of reflected quite a bit on that, just that attitude of feeling that I deserve something. And I first thing that came to mind is that I may be struggling because I'm an educated white man. And a lot of what I enjoy in life comes undeservedly as a result of the very privilege that I experience unconsciously or consciously just because of who or what I am. And if I were not, I would probably have a lot to share in this story. So that was one learning that came just from sort of exploring the topic. Uh, but the one, the one thing that came to mind was uh, a time in 19, no, in maybe, I think it was the year 2000. As a privileged white male, I was a business unit leader in a thriving subsidiary of a very large corporation here in Chicago. And uh, my children were about ready to go to college and life was good. I guess, I guess in some ways I was enjoying what I did not deserve, all those blessings. But at Christmas time of that year, I was called to my boss's office, which was in a different location. Um, and I went, assuming we were going to be planning the coming year, or I, knew, I didn't really know what. And what I learned was that, uh, and he did it so deftly, he relieved me of my position. I got fired. Anybody, anybody in here ever been fired? I feel like you don't really grow up until you get fired. Uh, and I was at a place, you know, where my children were about ready to go to college, and I was the breadwinner, and the sole breadwinner, and I felt like I don't deserve it. And I was mad, I was hurt, I was embarrassed. No, I wasn't embarrassed, I was ashamed. Which is bigger than being embarrassed. And, um, and, and through the grace of God, recovered relatively quickly. And, and because I'm a privileged white male, was not unemployed for very long. And the upside is I, in some ways, spawned me to take a different attitude toward employment and feel more ownership for my employment. And within two or three years, created my own business with some other partners. Uh, but that event, when I considered this topic, was the one where I felt like I deserve better than this. And, and then since, thinking about this deserving, that I loved your sharing, Carol, I have so many things that I, that I don't deserve in life. Just the, the, the long-suffering love of my wife, <laughs> my beautiful children, and their beautiful children, and this community, and safety, and prosperity. I really didn't do anything to earn that. And that's the grace of God. So I'm, I'm really grateful for all those things I don't deserve.
Our scripture this morning is from the Old Testament, Psalm 123. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. Who forgives all our iniquity. Who heals all our diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit. Who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. Who satisfies you with good as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and bountiful, I'm sorry, and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. For he knows how we are made. He remembers that we are dust. As for mortals, their days are like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone. And its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, O you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, obedient to his spoken word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers that do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. So we just want to take a moment to, to ask you to respond. Which perspective resonated with you when you heard these stories? When you just heard the scripture, what piece of scripture jumped out at you? Where do you find this comfort or challenge? Or what do you want to say to the Lord in response to this story? Creator's will. 
God, we simply no longer know how to live simply and in harmony with your creation. Divine creator, hear our prayer. God of our very being and nature, we have to search deep into the news to find such inspiring stories like the one from Switzerland when the teen Greta, who's gone from a solitary climate change protester to icon, or to the perseverance of tech-savvy Iranians to stay connected for social good on social media despite regime restrictions, or the recent hero story in Canada where one man rushed to the aid of the United States family from New Jersey at a campground when a sick and dying wolf attacked them in their tent at night. We're made all too aware of the evil and sick parts of human nature, but it doesn't seem to be leading to changes toward a more just and grace-filled world. There are children living in shipping containers, Infants and toddlers and teens remain in detention camps. Even as new allegations of sexual assaults come to light. God, we are mistreating one another. Your children of all ages. And we no longer know how to compassionately converse or have civil discourse. Divine love, hear our prayer. These global concerns are having local impact in every community. We have people here in this state who are without clean water. We pray for our entire creation. We pray for students, for teachers, for administrators, for support staff as schools return from break. We pray for the addict down the street. We pray for our upcoming mental health awareness initiatives. Lord, we pray to see things with new eyes, with compassionate and respectful hearts that can tend to our neighbors and the willingness to see to their needs. Lord, help us to find the divine energy within us so that we may be representatives of your love, grace, kindness, and compassion in our world. And Amen. thanks to all for your willingness to be so open for each person who shared their story and for everyone that shared their prayers because that's the other story that brings us together as a community.
worship service and you've heard the yearnings and the prayers of your people. As we go out this week, may the love of God surround each of us. May the peace of God dwell in us. May the justice of God compel us to speak truth to power and to step boldly in uncomfortable spaces. Go in peace and amen. Amen. Amen.